Hi, my name is Mike. Welcome back to the shop. Um, today we're going to uh, securely erase uh, a couple of uh, disk drives for a computer, one solid state and one traditional spinning uh, platter disk. And uh, we're going to do it with a little bit of a twist, uh, you know, how you would do it in a machine shop where it should pretty much guarantee that the data is unrecoverable. Okay, so what we have here are uh, two disk drives, uh, one a crucial 256 gig, 250 gig, whatever it is, um, M4 solid state drive, which the uh, computer's operating system reports failure is imminent. And uh, so this is, and this is not, I have had bad luck with the crucial drives. We buy uh, mostly Samsung where I work and uh, I've had almost zero failures and almost every one of the crucials we've bought has failed. So I don't buy them any longer. Um, this is a uh, old Seagate 250 gig um, Barracuda SATA drive. Um, it is functional, but barely, and uh, it's destined for the scrap heap. So I thought it would be uh, fun to do a video on how to securely erase them. Anyway, we'll start with the, uh, the little Crucial M4. So just, uh, and I don't want to go down stairs to find the proper screwdriver so I just had a little bit that's actually got a small enough point on it so we'll just get this out of here real quick okay so for anybody who hasn't ever seen one of these I mean they're just a circuit board with memory chips so in the casting this is a stamped aluminum this is cast and it actually looks like it doesn't really look like aluminum it looks more like magnesium and it's light so it's definitely not zinc doesn't really matter. It's going to go to the recycle bin. Um, so that is disassembled on that. The uh, Seagate drive uses uh, Torx bits. And uh, inside of these, if you've never seen one, is actually pretty interesting. Let's see what size those are. Those look like about a T8. Yeah. Now there's actually almost always some hidden screws hidden by the label. Let's see what we got under here. There's one. Let's see, where else? Is there another one? That feels like it. So that comes off. And of course, as you can see, they are very simple inside. You know, you've got a, an arm that moves back and forth. This has got the heads on it. There's a couple of neodymium magnets under there, which are very nice, salvageable for uh, a good many purposes. And then we have uh, the platters, which are, you know, beautifully finished. So let's see here. Is this an 8, a T8? Yeah, we can get this out. It's smaller. Let's see here. Is it nine? Let's see if I brought the right one. If a seven will fit. Uh, just. So that is, they have. These are very thin, but you know they're neodymium, so they're very powerful magnets. In this case, we want to. Uh, Get those off of there. So we'll just take our T7. So, you know, with today's modern, the heck, there we go. Uh, forensic techniques. They, they're really good at recovering the data off of these drives. And look at the machining on these. These are just beautiful. The precision inside of, these, of a disk drive is astonishingly cool. Because this is a single platter drive. It's got a motor in here with a bearing. So in this case, you know, the data on here, even though if you do this, you know, kind of mess it up a little bit, it would not function in a working drive after this. I mean, it, the dirt and everything else. It might, but the forensic specialists could almost certainly 
put this into a special enclosure and read it and get your data back off of this. So we're going to make it so they can't. Guaranteed. So actually, I suppose guaranteed is, is a bad word because there's no absolute guarantee, but we're going to make it highly improbable. Anyway, um, so this has a uh, 25 millimeter hole in the middle. So we're going to move over to the lathe and uh, mount this up and see what we can do. Okay, so we're over to the lathe. We need an arbor for this. I just happened, to, this was sitting on the shelf. I don't know what I used it for, but um, it's a piece of one inch diameter brass with a quarter inch um, piece of threaded rod sticking out of the end. And one inch is 25.4 millimeters, 25.44 in this case. So we're just gonna turn a tiny shoulder on this to, uh, to hold the uh, platter. So let's put this in the check. You know, stick it out a little bit. Okay, let's see here how this runs. Yeah, the threads aren't very true on that little rod, but the, the thing runs okay. So we don't need to take much off, and we don't want it very, very uh, deep. So our piece is uh, 1.3 millimeters thick, so we're just going to turn a 1 millimeter wide shoulder on there. So we'll put the DRO in uh, metric mode. Just bring our tool over and just touch it to the face. We're not even going to bother to face it. Zero the uh, Y axis or the Z. Let's see here. All right, that's one millimeter width on the DRO, near enough. see what our width is here our diameter I should say so so narrow it's hard to measure it's 25.2 so we'll take it down another 0.2 mil or so 2.5 and give it a little clearance. All right, let's see if our platter fit, fits that perfectly on there. Okay, so we've got our uh, one millimeter wide, 25 millimeter diameter shoulder and a fender washer, there may be other names for them, but that's what I learned to call them. So I think they're originally used for, you know, holding on auto body fenders. A lot of surface area for uh, sheet metal. And the screws on here is a little buggered up, so we'll have to give it a little assistance here. There we go. All right, that should run pretty true. Beautiful. So to, to make 100% sure that this is not readable, we'll take a nice facing cut and take all the uh, magnetic oxide off of this. Of course, it rings a lot, but this should do it. We'll take. Uh, let's see how this goes. It may not work. I've never actually tried this before, so we'll see how it goes. It's just made out of aluminum.
But of course, all of these little, all of the little chips now contain our data. I would think the odds of reassembling those, if you could find them all, are almost none. There will be tens of thousands of them. And you can see there's just a very fine, very, very fine chips and completely random. Pretty much no possible way of reassembling that into actual data. And now that it's getting towards the inside, we're actually getting a chip, which I suppose could be stretched back out and reassembled. So. Actually turned part of the uh, turned part of my washer there. So we'll do the other side just to be a hundred percent sure that this disc is not recoverable. And then it's aluminum, so the, after this it can go into the recycle bin. So as you can see. Uh, there's uh, no uh, magnetic particle material left on there, oxide. Well, it's not actually, I don't know what they use. Old days it was oxides, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll, uh, we'll take a pass down this side and guarantee our data integrity. <laughs> the integrity of erasure, I should say. And you can see how reflective this is. You can actually see the reflection of the lathe in there. It's so polished. Anyway, we're going to uh, take another pass on the back side here and make sure that this is securely erased. Okay, I would say that the chances of getting data off of this are uh, near zero at this point. Probably so close that uh, it's uh, it'd be a lot of a lot of numbers involved in there, especially on a nice messy lathe that's already full of chips. So where you've got no way to tell the good ones from the bad ones. Of course, the other alternative would be to, to uh, just face the whole thing off and just reduce it to uh, nothing but chips. But I'd say that's good, and this aluminum can be recycled now. So I would say that is securely erased. Lots of nice chatter marks. Uh, so I think we're good on this. Now we'll do the solid state drive. Okay, I've, uh, I've put the uh, drive into the, uh, the uh, vise, put it on some parallels so it's nice and flat. And now we got to take the drill chuck out of there. All right, let's stick a nice, I've uh, got a half inch carbide end mill here. That ought to be plenty hard for whatever these chips may be made out of. Okay, so we've got our uh, solid carbide end mill. I've got a uh, quill stop in to get us close, and then we'll use the uh, knee to get our depth. So we'll start off with a light pass, maybe 10 thousandths or so. It is slightly below the vice chest, so we gotta be a little careful around the edges. Let's see here, we'll run this at, uh, this will give us uh, 1300 RPM. We'll just take a nice slight skim cut to get our depth. Looks like a nice epoxy on those of some type. And the board is curved slightly because of the pressure from the vice jaws. So we'll have to take a little more depth on this. All right, there's our controller chip.
course we want to make sure these chips are rendered unrecoverable so we're not going to just take them off of the board so let's take about a ten thousandth or so I apologize for the noise of the vacuum cleaner, but that dust can't be good, so that's why I had to suck it up. <laughs> Whoops, my light just fell off. I don't know if I can get a, you know what, I'm gonna move the table over. So anyway, those, that's what the inside of those chips looks like. Um, you know, I mean, who knows what that actually is. It's, it's whatever is etched into the substrate, but it's kind of cute, kind of cool looking. Um, so those are, that's an up close and personal view. So let's see what we got over here. Uh, you can see the copper and then it's, it's going down to whatever the substrate is below that. But I'll mill the rust off, but uh, I'm going to use the vacuum because I cannot imagine that dust and whatever other horrible things are in it can be good for you. So I don't want to breathe it. Okay, so now I would say we have securely erased this hard drive or this uh, solid state disk. I wonder if we can get a good view of that. You can actually see the little traces and whatnot inside this chip, what's remaining of the chip, which is actually really cool. Uh, I'm gonna have to keep one of these. I've never seen that before. So anyway, we've got a few chips. A few got sucked up into our vacuum. Um, but you can see the copper and then the etching in there and there was at some point a layer of semiconductor in there which is very likely the silvery stuff. Um, so we have reduced the data on this one into very, very small pieces. Um, interestingly, I, thought that, I think it's amusing, uh, the M that was on the controller chip um, stands for Micron Technology which is the original name of Crucial. Uh, and uh, we have reduced most of the dust or most of the data to submicron pieces. So that seems a little bit, uh, seems fitting. In any case, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. And obviously <laughs> this is meant all in fun. Uh, there is no need for this kind of mess. Um, and uh, actually, so actually in, uh, in more of a realistic thing, if you can um, get some old hard drives that have failed, the platters are actually really useful in the machine shop because they are extremely flat, very consistent, because the heads literally do fly a few micro inches above the surface. Um, they, they, while the drive is at rest, they actually touch. There's, there's a, a Bernoulli effect that holds them up. So they are so well finished that I can't even slide them apart. They will actually ring together like gauge blocks. I could get these apart I would show you well you can see they, these have I rang them together and they've uh, stayed but any case they uh, they make really good shims and spacers if you need to to uh, you know put something on the clamp it down um, if you get you know a, a couple of drives from the same manufacturer you end up with some extremely very flat very consistent there we are ah, got them apart they are not magnetic that was held together sheerly purely by the uh, air between them so and now they're too dirty to do it again but in any case they're very flat and uh, they make really nice spacers for the shop they're aluminum so they're soft but they are very useful and there's no need to uh, destroy them like we did in any case uh, thanks for watching hopefully some more videos soon and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this it's uh, Memorial Day here in the United States so definitely take a minute and think about all the people that have sacrificed everything so that we could have a uh, the lifestyle that we have and uh, it is greatly appreciated so i will uh, see you all later thanks for watching